nine months in with the Aero 15 X9 as my everything computer, including all of the edits performed on Bob of All Trades since February of 2019. It's been trustworthy, predictable, and reliable while allowing me to game on the side. Someone once told me, thin and light, big battery, thermal performance, pick two. This is my re-review of the Aero 15 X9. This Aero 15 X9 features an all-aluminum 4.6-pound chassis that's coming in at just under 3 quarters of an inch thick. It features an i7-8750H, an RTX 2070 Max-Q. There's two memory slots available. Feel free to occupy this with a maximum of 64 gigabytes at 2666 speeds. There's also two M.2 slots. The first slot is occupied with an Intel 760p NVMe drive. That slot is NVMe only. The second empty M.2 drive is compatible with NVMe and SATA drives. The network interface card is a killer 1550i on top of an Intel 9560. Feel free to switch the killer software off within the control center. The 94 watt hour battery is good for 5 to 7 hours with basic tasks up to 9 hours watching movies. The full HD 144Hz IPS display comes in at 98% standard RGB, 310 nits, and is x right Pantone certified. And since each arrow is calibrated individually from the factory, it's not necessary for me to go out and buy a Spider 5 calibration tool. Strong port selection on the Aero includes a LAN port, USB 3.1, HDMI, USB-C, and a combo headphone microphone jack. Over on the right hand side is an ultra high speed 2 card reader, a 4 lane Thunderbolt 3, two USB 3.1s, the barrel power plug which has a 230 watt brick, and our lock. The exhaust of this Aero 15 comes out at the hinge, so you will not be able to use this with the lid closed as a docking station. The glass touchpad uses Windows Precision drivers, has excellent click symmetry, the keyboard has a numeric pad, and since I have been using this for 9 months, I've grown quite comfortable with it, so I do enjoy the keyboard, and it's not that loud either. 720p webcam and microphone located at the bottom of the bezel, at least put on an angle here versus a straight shot at my chest, which means typing on the keyboard. The knuckles are not going to be staring at you like so. Overall, the microphone picks up nicely. When I decide to max out the fans, you will hear that immediately. Then it will dim down to around 20% maximum volume. Perhaps an overall design aesthetic to in order to please the masses and then have the webcam at the bottom. Maybe that was something Gigabyte did right. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. The lifeblood of our Aero 15 is the Gigabyte Control Center. We have various profiles for the CPU and GPU, although I do like my fine tuning, which you will see here in a hot second. I like the Manager tab on the Aeros. It gives me access to toggle a few things on and off, including the Pantone display. I always thought that was really neat to be able to see the difference there. Excellent job. Of course, you will see this set to auto from the factory. Go ahead and set this to balanced or high performance as you see fit. The charging policy is very nice as it will keep the laptop at a particular charge and not constantly pushing juice to the battery. And of course, that killer optimizer. See you later. Fusion controls the RGB. Very nice flow to the keyboard. Really nice looking RGB. I have nothing to complain here. It is per key. What more could you ask for? Now within the arrow, we can actually control the fan curve. You have quiet, which will make the laptop almost silent, normal, deep control, so you can actually select and drag this wherever you see fit, and it will go through all 14 stages of the fan curve for ultimate customization. I love this feature. And Smart Utility shows the current driver version installed on the Arrow, the official version you will find on their support page, and the latest version oftentimes that has not been sent to the official site or Windows Update. Our Arrow is on the latest BIOS, FB08. Maximum fans run at 48 decibels and an ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The GPU and CPU thermal limitations are at 87 and 90 degrees respectively. And stock thermal performance tends to run up to those temperatures. Tuning the laptop, however, we will get a GPU temperature in the upper 70s and the CPU at a maximum of 90 but with a much higher boost frequency. The settings applied on the GPU were at 1290 MHz at 0.7 volts and the CPU was tuned with a 250 and 125 core and cache undervolt. Doing so gave us a fire strike score on the GPU of 17,600 and CPU at 16,000, times by 6,250 and 6,550 on the CPU, Port Royal 3,660, Cinebench R20 at 2,900 and Cinebench R15 at 1,200. And the keyboard temps are quite lovely even if I let the chassis thermal throttle itself.
Like all of my audio tests, it definitely sounds better in person, and that's no exception here. If I had reviewed 50 laptops, I would put the Aero within the top five. enjoyed this review one tenth as much as I've enjoyed using this arrow for the last nine months, mission accomplished. Links in the description below for all arrow laptops and any deals that I may find. And I'd like to thank you for watching my re-review of the Aero 15 X9.